Hey friends, I'm Kat. Welcome to my channel and welcome to our monthly book haul. So this is going to be encompassing June and quite a bit of May. And we honestly have an embarrassing amount of books today. Like there is no way to cut it. There is a ridiculous amount of books. And for somebody who said they're trying to be better at buying books, so yeah, honestly, good great job me. So we... Yeah, I honestly have like no excuse aside from some of these are pre-orders that came in, I guess. I also just did so bad in general. Like I have two big book outlet hauls, which Bell Book Outlet is a basically like online thrift store and it has like a bunch of overstock books that are at fantastic prices. And I have two huge hauls from there, which both of them, I believe there was a sale for all paperback books on sale for $7.99. And I decided to really just splurge. I have a huge thrift haul that I literally just did today. And I do have my monthly aardvark book club fairy loot combo box and book of the month plus three two or three fairy loots that came in from pre-orders so i do have to say i have canceled pretty much all of my subscriptions as of this point i decided i was for the moment at least i'm spending too much money on books and i really need to rein it back so i've decided that going forward i am only saying subscribe to the arcane society which is a bi-monthly romanticy box that i really really love and also the fairy loot romanticy which might change honestly because I haven't loved a lot of the books that have been coming out for it in the past first few months but there is a book that July's book choice I'm really excited for and also I kind of want to see what the books are going to be like going forward so for now at least I'm going to be saying subscribe to that one but everything else at least for six months or so we are canceling them all. I'm just about to be doing a bunch of renos on my house and honestly I can't really be spending the money on this I need to be spending my money more that way so I kind of want to just save money on books where I save money where I can and a lot of these I really don't need new releases coming in especially when they sit on my shelf for months and I don't really get to them so I can just definitely like utilize the library a little bit more that way and in a few months if I'm in a better position and I'm really missing some of these I'll consider resubscribing. That being said though I am on the waiting list for the Owl Crate Adult Fantasy Book box and I think if that comes in I'm going to subscribe because I've been on that waiting list for like six months now and I really really love their book choices and and the additions they've been doing. So that is gonna be like one of my few exceptions. I think that I'm also maybe on the waiting list for the Page and Wick subscription, which that one could potentially be one that I subscribe to. It honestly just really depends kind of when they come in, where I'm at. But for now, the plan is to pretty much only stay with Arcane Society and Very Loot Romanticy, and also to really, really take advantage of those skip options. So hopefully this means that the book calls going forward are gonna be much smaller. And if we do get books, hopefully they they will be cheap thrift store options like some of these are and that that will be all that I'm buying. So with this little ramble at the beginning done, let's actually jump into some of these books. I know for sure book outlet, I think they are all books that I've read before, which is another thing I'm really hoping to do this year is to only buy books that I've already read and I really enjoyed and I've decided I want on my shelves. So we're going to try to really prioritize that for the second half of the year. And also I might, this might be coming soon, but I think that I'm going to do an updated goals video and really Really try to focus on getting my physical TBR down in the second half of the year. So grab your coffee if you have one and let's get started. Let's get started especially with book outlet number one. This is great but I can already tell that some of the covers were damaged by the way that things were packaged. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I honestly don't remember what is in this order because I've had these two boxes for like two months now and I just didn't want to use them. Honestly I didn't feel like including them in other unboxings because there's so much. So first off we have If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. This is a Korean novel that really dives into the beauty standards that are in place in Korea and following I believe the stories of three different women and four women who are just trying to make their way in the world and really seeing how beauty standards de define everything that they do and how so much of their life is kind of basically controlled by what men want and the like crazy standards that are imposed on these women. One that I quite enjoyed. Ooh, Severance by Ling Ma. This is a pandemic novel and it's honestly one of the few that I've really, well actually no I love pandemic novels what am I saying? One that I've recently read that I've really enjoyed and it's one that I'm also like ridiculously obsessed with the cover. Just something about this pale pink is like so aesthetically pleasing but it is... Hey buddy! Okay. 
it's in a world that almost turns like the people who are infected into like zombie-like people. So they kind of just continue on with their lives with no thought. And we're following somebody who is part, who's immune to the thing, to the pandemic and is living her life and then eventually falls in with a group of people who are just trying to find their way to survive. Really, really enjoyed this one. Really beautifully written. The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is a little fantasy romance. So we have, we're following a world where there's witches and and Mika Moon, she is basically, she's created a YouTube channel to kind of like be a fake witch, but she's a real one. There's something about their powers where if there's multiple like witches together, they're more likely to draw attention to who they are. So the Society of Witches has created this rule where witches are not in to be in close proximity. Everybody kind of has to live their own life. They can gather like once a month, but it is like a very quick gathering so that it doesn't draw attention. So because of this YouTube channel, she gets a message from somebody who is in the care of three young witches and asked her to come and like help out with them and we're following her romance with this caretaker and as uh, she's also helping to raise these young witches and take care of them oh perfect so i've been wanting to get a copy of this this is the second book in a duology but i don't own the first one i just this is the only one that was on sale at the moment but this is called a desolation called peace book one is called a memory called empire and this was one of the most intricate fantasy or sci-fi worlds that i've read in the long this time and it was one of those intense political like just masterpieces it's so hard to describe like i genuinely don't know how much i can say about it that without getting into like intense nitty-gritty details but we're basically following a newly appointed ambassador to this space station and she goes into the empire of the world empire of this world to kind of act just as the ambassador the previous one had been murdered and she's also sent there with um with the task of trying to figure out who murdered him and very very quickly gets involved like crazily in these court politics. It was so good. Really love this one. Really hoping that uh, there might be some more books coming out in this eventually, but I do want book one soon. Yeah, love this one so much. I almost bought a copy of this the other day, so I'm really happy that I didn't actually because I completely forgot that I bought it. But this is Holly by Stephen King. This is one of his most recent releases. Came out last year and won the Goodreads Choice Awards for horror, and it was great. It was great. So we're following the third book of one of Stephen King's more like popular characters, Holly. And I haven't read any of the, her other books, but you can definitely go into this one without knowing anything. But we are following her as, I believe she's an invest, a um, private investor, investigator, and she gets involved with solving the disappearance of a bunch of people. And this is really, really creepy. So it is basically following, there are two semi-retired, very elderly people in this neighborhood, and they are abducting people and doing things with them. And it is just this story of them doing everything possible to not get caught and Holly trying to find her way to catch them. And it's just creepy. It is so, so creepy. It is just kind of one of those horrifying books of how people can be the most disturbing thing at all. You don't even need monsters. And I think it's probably one of the best books that I've read by Stephen King in the longest time. Like I truly cannot remember a book from him that's captivated me like to the level that this one did. So this was fantastic. Catherine House. This is a weird little dark academia where people are invited. So Catherine House is a school of higher learning like no other. So few people are selected to be brought in. Tuition's free, but in exchange you have to give up basically four years of your life. So you, or three years of your life. So you're completely removed from the outside world. You're not to have, not allowed to have any commun communication whatsoever with friends, family, anybody, no social media, no like internet, nothing. But when you come out of it, you are pretty much expected that you can go on to a life where anything, where you'll be able to achieve like your wildest dreams. And, and that nothing is going to be like off limits to you. So we're following Inez, who's somebody who's brought into this school and it's very quickly feeling to her like this is more of a prison than a school and that very quickly she's realizing that she is not as like she's not listening to the things that are being fed to her as much as the other students and she starts investigating what's happening. This was great. It has like super low ratings on Goodreads but I gave it five stars. It's just one of those books that I think it will not work for many people but those who really like it are gonna love it like I did. It was just weird. It was weird. It had like no real like payoff to it. It had no real plot in a lot of ways. It was weird and fantastic and I loved it. Piranesi 
by Susanna Clark. Another one of the weirder books I read. Another one that I'm so excited to have. And there's a slight chance I bought this because I feel like I bought this multiple times. So I feel like I might have it in my other order. We'll see. Um, but this is honestly like nothing I can say about this one will really describe how weird it is and how truly different it is. But a, it's a novel set in like a dreamlike alternative reality. So quickly say, Yaronezi's house is like no ordinary, ordinary building. Its homes are, its rooms are infinite, its quarters, quarters endless, and its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues, each one different from all the others. Within the labyrinth of halls, an ocean is imprisoned, waves thunder, staircases, rooms are flooded in an instant. But Piranesi is not afraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth himself. He lives to explore the house. So Piranesi is just in this house and that is the story he is exploring. There is somebody that he calls the other who visits but otherwise his entire life is just exploring these rooms and slowly by slowly like bit by bit he is starting to remember who he is and what his life was before he came into this house it's crazy this one's so good it is another one of the weirder books i've read and fantastic really really good before i let go by kendi ryan this is a romance that i read earlier this year and we are following a couple yasmin and josiah who were married for years they have two children but things happened a few years previous that have basically made them like unable to connect as a couple they dealt with a few instances of grief and really were not able to get past that so we're following them after they've been divorced for about two years and they kind of start to realize that maybe they aren't done with loving each other maybe they still have room in their heart and maybe all they needed was time to heal this was beautiful i cried it was fantastic it was just a really really beautiful romance the one whose cover has been ruined is girl one this is about clones this is a super underrated sci-fi book but we're following girl one she's the first of nine so-called miracle babies who are said to be cloned from direct copies of their mothers the mothers all loved and lived in this homestead which is basically like a women only i'm gonna say cult but it wasn't really it was just like a women only place and something weird happened that they mothers refused to talk about but all of there were nine daughters born who were all exact clones of their mothers and years later something happens and it seems that the mothers and the daughters are slowly being killed off they're slowly disappearing and girl one josephine decides well starts investigating because her mother disappears and she is very quickly realizing that she might be in danger as well not enough people talk about this one i thought it was really great it was like a very very fantastic sci-fi book and like a little bit of a thriller as well for those who like their genre blend and then we have middle game by sean and mcguire so in this one we're following twins and twins roger and dodger roger's skilled with words like words are his thing dodger numbers are hers they were basically they're twins they were separated up by this al alchemy society and we like i don't even know how to explain it we're following them as they come together and try to basically live out this prophecy and this is one of the weirdest but most fantastic books i've ever read it is so complicated it is so confusing it is one that the entire run you're going through it you will only vaguely understand what's happening but it's perfection it is truly perfection at the end like when everything comes together and you start to realize what is actually happening it is so good and yeah i i absolutely love this book sean mcguire is so good i'm reading one of her other books right now into the throne deep amazing amazing like i need to read all of her works but this really really good very happy to have a copy okay and now the second book i let haul all right clara and the sun by kazuo ishigara i loved this one so so much it came out i believe in 2020 and we are following the through the eyes of an ai doll who is basically created to be a companion for children so clara is an artificial friend and she is this doll who sits in her place in the store every day just watching the sun and being fascinated by it and just wondering about the world outside and she eventually gets picked to be to be brought home as somebody's like artificial friend and we're following her as she starts to understand the world just really like is through the world trying to be trying to adapt to everything that she sees and really like just falling in love with the world and trying to understand what it is to be a human i guess like it's beautiful it was a really really beautiful book i did give this one five stars and one i really love to revisit because i just it was so beautiful and just had such a wonderful outlook on the world happy place by emily henry not really gonna say much about this i think everyone knows the plot but we are following a couple who has broken up and they haven't come out to their friends about that yet but they all go on this huge family
random like friend trip and they just kind of have to pretend they're still together. I think this has been my favorite of Emily Henry's work so far. Loved it. Gave it five stars. Really, really happy to have copy. Honestly, I was just kind of waiting to see if I could find a cheaper copy than the like 40 color, $40 new hardback. Same with this one, Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Same, another one that I loved and I just wanted to not have to spend $40 on a copy. So this is, we're following two doctors who work together and one of the doctors has recently started working and he's kind of coming off as this arrogant jerk, but he eventually opens up to our female main character and then realizes that he just deals with intense anxiety. So the two of them start a bit of like a pen pal relationship that eventually turns into her acting as his fake girlfriend because his ex fiance is now getting married to his brother and he wants somebody to kind of come and act as a buffer. I thought this had like really really fantastic anxiety around beautiful relationship and just like another one full of like heartwarming feelings. It was beautiful. Out There by Kate Folk. I have not been able to find a copy of this anywhere so I was so thrilled when I saw this. This is a like series of short stories that are intensely weird and so good. They are, this is like my perfect, really fucking weird sci-fi short story kind of thing. Like think of the vibes of how high we go in the dark. It's similar vibes to that for me. But yeah, we're just following a bunch of weird and eerie forces um, that lurk beneath the surface of ordinary experience. I think that it was just, this was amazing. Like it's kind of hard to talk to. There's too many, like a medical ward for mysterious bone melting disorder. Curtain of void obliterates the globe at a steady pace. A man fleeing personal scandal, enters a codependent relationship with a house that requires a particularly demanding level of care. A woman uses dating apps to find a partner despite the threat posed by blots. Handsome artificial men dispatched by Russian hackers to steal data. It's honest, so, so good. So weird, so good. I love like a good sci-fi short story collection. And then one more sci-fi book, The Deep Sky. In this one, we're following a space exploration of a group of young women who they've spent their entire life training for this from the ages of like 12 onward. And we follow dual timelines, one of them when they're in this incredibly competitive school atmosphere where they're all competing to be the representatives of their country. And another when they are on the this mission itself. It is a voyage basically to go populate a new planet. and within it there's plans so they are under like cryogenic sleep for 10 years they're woken up for 10 years because the intention is that all of these women will be artificially inseminated they will rear children and have the worst of this child raising done on the ship instead of on the planet in adverse conditions and then they're going back to sleep for 10 years before they get to the planet while on the ship there is an explosion that kills the i believe the captain and several other members of the ship and we're following as one one of the crew members is tasked with investigating what happened and is trying to and just reminiscing about her years at the school. Really good, really, really good. I like this a lot. A new author that I'm really excited to get to know a bit more. Next, next I'm going to go to my Art Vart Book Club for the month of June. This is Canadian-based subscription. It is, I believe, $18.99 a month and then every additional book that you get is $13.99. They are all new release hardcovers and it's one that I really, really love. The selection of books that they come out with truly have been like incredibly impressed overall with the subscription. It is definitely one of my favorites just by the pure choice of books that you get. So let's see. So every month you get bookmarks for um, bookmarks, custom colors, and you get a little bingo board or challenge usually. So we have all of those. And let's see. So I've already read this one. This summer will be different by Carly Fortune. This is a romance book that takes place uh, basically over five years. We are following a woman who every year goes to her best friend's family home in Prince Edward Island. And while there on her first summer, she sparked up a relationship with the friend's brother. But it, the friend had made one rule and that is don't fall in love with my brother so they've kept it secret it's been their ongoing tradition that every year they will hook up at least once while she's there and they'll keep it a secret but now in the present we are leading up to this friend's wedding and everything comes out it was fine it was fine i don't know i'm not really loving carly fortune's books anymore i liked her first one i think i own a copy of it i can't remember i think it's um every summer after i like that one i thought it was fun all of her other ones have just come in kind of bland 
This is one of my most anticipated books of the year and The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. So we in this world outside the island there was nothing. The world was destroyed by a fog that swept the planet killing anyone it touched. On the island it is idyllic. 122 villagers, three scientists leave it living in peaceful harmony until one of the scientists is found brutally stabbed to death and they learned that the murder has triggered a lowering of the security system around the island. The only thing that was keeping the fog at bay. So they have 127 hours to solve this murder or the fog is going to come in and smother the island. I'm really really excited about this one. I love the premise of it. It's something about it just sounds so fascinating. And then we have Dreadful Creatures or no just Dreadful sorry. This kind of seems like a whimsical fantasy. It is it is bad enough waking up in a half destroyed evil wizard's workshop with no eyebrows, no memories, and no idea how long you've been the dread lord whomever. Oh, no idea how long you have before the dread lord whomever shows up to murder you horribly and then turn your skull into a goblet or something. It's a lot worse when you realize that the dread lord whoever, whomever is you. It just kind of seems fun. It seems a little whimsical and fun and I could definitely use that in my fantasy and in my life. So I am not, not upset to be getting this. I think Aardvark is one that I am going to very quickly resubscribe to. I have a feeling I'm going to be missing this one too much to not continuously get it. Just based off the books that I've been getting the last few months, like I can very, very strongly say that I'm going to desperately miss having it. Okay, next we have two fairy late pre-orders that we'll look a look at. So first off, I have already opened these, by the way. Um, Ruthless Bows by, that's what it's called. Yeah, Ruthless Bows by Rebecca Ross. So this one's a sequel to Divine Rivals, which was like a really fantastic book about two rival academics who are like trying to become investigative reporters in this world that is ravaged by gods and they end up falling in love. I very very shockingly gave that one five stars. Um, usually I never give YA five stars so I was so pleased at how much I loved it and of course had to complete a duology. So here's the edition, sprayed edges, the um, internal artwork, and then the naked foiled hardback. Gorgeous very very gorgeous and the next one we have i have read already and that is an education of malice by st gibson so at this point i think i have pretty much all of their books in special editions and of course i'm gonna keep doing it so this is a dark academia about two rival poets who fall in love and they're one of their like very intense relationships with their professor who uh, might be a vampire so here's the edition so i think the cover is the same but sprayed edges the internal artwork and then a naked hardback. There is my a fairy loot romanticy. And this is the June June box, I believe. Here's the spoiler for the month or the theme for the month and a little spoiler information. Yeah. Okay, what way what way do we open it? So here we go. We have Nectar of the Gods by Ella Fields. So I believe that this is a completely original cover. Um, beware the fae and never trust them with your heart. So we're following a wicked fairy begins a seductive game of cat and mouse with our main character and she must agree to marry him. So internal artwork, I think this little puppy, I love it. Gorgeous, gorgeous foiling and just some flowery spray touches. I'm excited. I think this is honestly one that I had on my Kindle TBR at some point. Um, one that I picked up and looked at a few times and just haven't actually read. So I'm really, really excited. And that's kind of why I want to keep that subscription for a little bit at least just to, I'm liking some of the book's choices that are coming out. Not 100% convinced on some of them, but I am impressed with some of them. And the June Fairy Lude Combo Adult and YA only box. This is the last one I think I'm getting. No, this is May. This is May's box. I think I skipped June, so this should be the last one I get. So, oh, this way. Our adult book is The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields, and this edition is everything I ever wanted. So I think the cover is the same as the original, but we obviously have this like honeysuckle sprayed edges, which when I saw, when I saw that Fairy Loot was going to do an edition of this, this is 100% what I wanted. This is why I decided to keep this edition. Also, this is one of my more anticipated books. So stunning, stunning internal artwork gorgeous foiling and then we have an alternate dress jacket. 
so I think this is a sapphic, sapphic romance between two witches. I believe one of them has, there is a curse on her family that no one can fall in love with a honey witch. And then we're following a grumpy skeptic who doesn't believe in magic and it's their romance. Okay, and our YA book. So, what way? The Temptation of Magic. I kind of like this edition. It feels very like old, uh, old textbook. Here's a little artwork and the info. Okay, here is the sprayed edges. Internal artwork, it's giving dark academia for sure. Foiled edges and an alternative dust jacket. So quickly, quickly from the back, the thing on the back. He was an imperial, her greatest threat and greatest fascination. Everything she'd been warned against and yet she wanted him still. Okay, maybe enemies to lovers. A little fantasy moment. Okay, so we're at the last of the boxes, which is my June book of the month. Again, cancel this one. Will not be getting it anymore. Um, might at some point rejoin, but we'll see. Kept like getting it and I would put it on hold for like, or skip for like three months at a time and then get a new one. And I decided to just cancel it overall. Oh, we do have a visitor. I don't know if you'll see him. Hey buddy. But I decided to just cancel my book of the month overall. Just, I'm not using it. Well, I am using, I'm using it a lot. I just, money I don't need to spend. So. I got One Star Romance as my actual book. So I think these two, they are, I think you don't like that. So she's an author, he gave her book one stars and now they have to like walk down the aisle together as members of a bridal party. And it just starts like a really awkward kind of relationship. Not in Love by Ali Hazelwood, one of my most anticipated books of the year. So we're following a STEM, woman in STEM, guy in finance. I think his company is trying to buy out hers and they're in a, like a really awkward position because of it and have to keep their romance a secret. The Rom-Commers by Catherine Arden. This, so she's rewriting this love story, but can she re rewrite her own? So she's a screenwriter and she gets a chance to rewrite a script for a famous screenwriter. And so she moves to LA for six weeks and works alongside him. So their romance. And One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. So this is, actually I really like Ruth Ware books just in general, just say that. I used to get arcs of all of them. I just kind of like have fallen off of that, but it's a bunch of couples on a desert island for a like dating relationship competition show and things start going wrong so somebody dies I think they're cut off by the mainland have no phones and unable to contact anyone so they are banding together for survival and then their bookmark is very different this month wow crazy so we're, we're so close to the end we're gonna power through these last bit but this is actually just a huge haul that I got at a thrift shop this morning and I went a little crazy because the prices were were fantastic but you definitely did not need to do these so <laughs> oopsie 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 first off we have eight books three or seven there's an, there's eight in total there might be another one but they're all from the k daniel series from Ioni andrews this is one of my all-time favorite series not enough people talk about it more people really really need to and i want everyone to read this but I never, I never, never find these secondhand and they're all about six dollars. So this was truly like way too good a deal to pass up. I could not stop myself from doing it and I've wanted to own these books for such a long time now. It's just one of those like I'm not prioritizing spending money on it and I've kind of been, here's the other one, kind of like just not been wanting to spend, how, like there's not a lot of money per edition but I just didn't want to spend it. So we have all of those. Two books in the Rainwild Chronicles by Robin Hobb. So there's Dragon Keeper and Dragon Haven books one and two. These are just books in her extended Farseer world. Not there yet, slowly getting there. Caught like picking up editions as I see them kind of collect and also like these are some of the nicest editions I've ever seen secondhand so why not. The Winds of Dune, one of the extended Dune world books written by Brian Herbert. Brian Herbert who is Frank Herbert's son. Don't really know where this one takes place in the world. Don't really know what the reading order is but I bought it because I saw it and also I thought it was only $5.95. Turns out it was $15 and I didn't realize that till I got home but oh well I have it now so eventually eventually I will continue on in this world and all of the extended books then only two more only two more so 
Oath of Fealty by Elizabeth Moon. She is an author I've wanted to read from before, but I do think that this, so it's a realm that she's written in before, and I do think that this is like the continuation in a world. So I'm gonna have to read other books in this. I, I don't even know how to say that, the, the name of the original trilogy, but I'm going to look into it and see like if I need to read the other books, if I want to, and then eventually I'll get to this one. And I have Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. This is a contemporary romance between a house flipping YouTube star and I think a team member but yeah so it's their roommate relationship. I like Lucy score books quite a bit so excited to get to this one and there you have it my friends. This is our ridiculously huge and unnecessary book haul that is was way overdue and way bigger than it ever should have been. So thank you for joining along in this adventure and we are definitely not gonna be doing a book haul this big for quite some time because this was a bit extreme. So thank you for watching. If you haven't already please subscribe. Let me know if you've read any of this books and what your thoughts are. And hopefully I will see you in a video soon. And bye from our little buddy too.